Good morning to you. I told you guys I would do a part three to the jump starting a vehicle uh, thing. We talked about part one, which is the proper procedure for hookup of booster cables or a jump pack. In part two, we talked about the different types of jump packs if you choose to buy one. And now in part three, we talked about the dangers of what could happen if the battery is frozen and you need to jump start it. So one. Don't ever try to jump start a frozen battery. Not a good idea. And the rule of thumb is if a battery freezes, that it's no good anymore. It's time to replace it. And why is that? Well, for one, if you if you try to jump start a frozen battery, they say they can explode. Um, and a lot of times what end up happening is they internally short together because the swelling of the battery itself. And when it freezes, it pushes the plates together and can break the connections in the battery. It can do all kinds of things. So um, that's one of the reasons why. Think about in the wintertime when your pipes freeze, they expand, and they pop. They break. They crack. Well, same concept inside a battery. They could It could break the connections where the cells are connected together, or it can push the cells together. They say if you're going to do anything with the battery, you have to reuse that battery. You got to pull it out of the vehicle and let it rethaw completely before you try to do anything. And then at that point, some people say that you probably have somewhat of a degraded health loss of that battery because of the condition that it was in. Now, I've had hybrid vehicles come in where the battery is frozen and like the, the, the main 12 volt battery is frozen and they've come back several times because of where the customer this was one specific situation with the C-Max, and it was extremely cold outside. And the customer rarely rode the vehicle. they just park it outside in the same spot, and they would drive their Fusion Hybrid and leave the C-Max parked where it was, and the battery kept freezing. Well, then the electrical system started having issues because it was drain, thaw, jump start drain thaw jump start drain you know just over and over again and they finally brought it to the dealer and i'm like look you gotta you gotta drive this thing you gotta move this thing around you know i've had batteries that in freezing temperatures are completely fine and don't ever freeze as long as people are using them and not letting them sit and then the dangers of trying to jump start one while it's swelled up and frozen plates shorted together connections broke inside the battery that's another issue um Jumper cable quality. Sorry, I'm trying to stop moving, but I'm talking and I do all this off the top of the head. Now that we've talked about frozen batteries, jumper cable quality. Jumper cable quality is very important. If you buy those cheap, you know, hazard, roadside hazard kits or whatever for somebody for Christmas or something like that, sure, it's not a bad idea. If you buy one kit for yourself or your daughter or your son or your wife, or vice versa, the wife for anybody else in the family, not a bad idea. The problem with those is they're very cheap. The connections typically end up breaking. Uh, the cable ends are not very good quality. Some of them don't open wide enough or clamp tight enough to stay on where they're supposed to, to go. So really investing in a good set of cables is key if you're going to have uh, a set of cables in your vehicle. And, you know, some people, they go cheap. They use a... You know, the cheaper stuff. I don't recommend doing that. If you're going to get a good set of cables and you want something that is going to last a long time, let me show you something that I would use. It's heavy duty. Um, a lot of the truck guys like using this style of, of jumper cables. It's kind of overkill, but it is what it is. I like using this type of cable. So right here you can see these one gauge heavy duty cables at Harbor Freight. They're 30 feet long. Really nice clamp on the end of it. Really nice cables. This is the type of cable I like to use to jump start, not those little dinky ones. And these right here are from Amazon. 25 feet, 1 gauge. These are similar in price, except the uh, Harbor Freight ones you get about 5 more feet for, I think, like 6 more bucks. I will have the link to both of these items in the pinned comment uh, in the description. Uh, so if you guys would like to purchase them, you can. But this is the type of cable I like to use just because it's safer, uh, carries more current, and they're heavy-duty built. I don't like the cheap ones, the little small jumper cables. They just don't last for me. They end up breaking, falling apart, 
and uh, they just don't do what I need them to do. And if you ever needed to go from a car to like a piece of equipment or something like that, or have something heavy duty, you have the cables there already, and it doesn't cost much more. It's just by a nice heavy duty set. Well, that's all I got for this morning's uh, video. Uh, hope y'all are doing well, and uh, I hope this little three-part series has done something for you in explaining jump packs, how to jump a vehicle properly, and you know what? I'm going to leave a one more picture at the end of this to show you, our guys from EP Auto, exactly how to jump start a vehicle. They gave you a little diagram of the vehicle that's running versus the vehicle that's stalled out and not running, and you need to jump it. And it's exactly the same method that I showed you um, or that I talked about in video two. Thanks, guys. Be blessed.